Day Fox. A. Day Fox, President of Prospect Heights Democrats for Reform. Forest City Ratner signed a community benefits agreement promising jobs and affordable housing at the Atlantic Yard site. Now that the organizations that signed the CBA no longer exist, the community has no representative at the table. What are you going to do as mayor to make sure that these promises are kept? First and foremost, I've made a pledge in this campaign not to accept uh, any contributions from developers or from lobbyists because, because I'm, I want to be able to, I'm not anti-development, I want to make decisions on the merits. Um, and uh, I want to make sure that all of these, all of these entities, uh, whether it be Atlantic Yards, Forest Ratner, uh, and some corporations we give huge tax breaks to promise to create jobs in the city, actually follow up on those things. And uh, uh, if they don't, uh, we're gonna take some strong action. Um, the bottom line is you've gotta be able to be independent in order to do that. Uh, some of my colleagues here have taken millions of dollars from developers. Actually, I, I have to apologize. I have to apologize to Christine, I said, I said to her the other night that she's taking hundreds of thousands. I was wrong, it was over a million. And it's really, it's really, it's really Bill de Blasio who's taking a couple of hundred thousand dollars. So I apologize. Is that my rebuttal or my answer to the question? Both. Oh, oh, all right, well let me do the rebuttal first. Uh, I'm incredibly proud of the public finance system we have. And every dollar I've taken has been part of that public finance system. A system that I and my colleagues updated and made stronger uh, in 2007 and 2008. And in 2009, the first election that was under those new rules, the Campaign Finance Board did an independent study and said the changes we made under my leadership in the council were the most significant in the history of the city of New York to limit the interest of business and special interests in city government. That's the way I'm raising money. I'm proud of the wet law we've put in place and the public system we have, the system, in fact, that the state is trying to put in place right now. That was my answer to the rebuttal. Do I get an answer to the question? Yes, you do. Okay, fair enough. You know, there have been CBAs, community benefit agreements, all across the city. And although many haven't had the unique problem that Forest City Ratners have, where the groups don't exist anymore, many of them have the same results in the end that not everything is followed through on. And that's part of the challenge of how community benefit agreements are structured and that you're not, you know, they're not part of the land use process and can't be in the charter. So what really needs to happen is to make sure that the elected officials at every level, local and all the way to citywide, are continuing to focus on what was committed to, being in the room with the community and the developer or whoever the other entities are, on a regular basis to get reports on where things are happening and being very clear and transparent with the community and the city about where things are at. And the mayor or their you know, representatives needs to be at the table with the community making sure that the promises that had been made are being delivered on. And that kind of hands-on follow-up is what's clearly needed here and in other places as well. Come January 2014, I'm gonna turn the heat up. Yeah. I'm really gonna turn the heat up on this so-called Atlantic Yards Development Project. Bruce, Bruce and his team have been to my office. They've tried to explain to me what it is that they're doing that is so great for Brooklyn and the city of New York. I've patiently listened, but at the end of every meeting, the questions are simple. It's been a decade. People have been kicked out of their homes. Promises of jobs and affordable housing have been mentioned to no avail today because we don't see any housing. We see some, some popcorn vendor of jobs that are available to local residents. And yet, where is the housing, where is the jobs? After hundreds of millions of dollars 
of city, state, and MTA subsidies, whether it be through outright tax breaks or capital commitments, after a decade, all we have is a stadium. It's a beautiful stadium, don't get me wrong, but was it worth all that public subsidy that was surrendered? The answer so far is absolutely not. We continue to do community benefits agreements from community to community, council person to council person, and it varies from neighborhood to neighborhood. We need to put this in place across the city of New York. So promises of employment, promises of, what about minority businesses that need to, you know, that, that should be a part of these agreements. We need to institutionalize this across the city so it shouldn't be from one neighborhood to another. It should be part of a normal agreement. And one of the, as you look at development projects across the city, we're giving them, here's a development project to one major developer. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If you look at something like Battery Park City and other developments like that, where you've done stage development with multiple developers that build in good times and bad times, and you hold each of them responsible as you move along, that's a better way of doing development. It gives communities opportunity, it gives them a full voice, and it's not up to the organization that's no longer there to be able to monitor and have a seat at the table. City Hall needs to take ownership. The mayor needs to take ownership of a lot of this and make sure it occurs and that there's fairness and equity across the board. Well, let's be real about the fact that a mayor has immense power to create discipline when it comes to the development community. And if developers don't keep their promises to the city, I, I do not think the, the legal limitations stand in our way. Because I assure you, developers will be back time and time again wanting various considerations from City Hall. If they don't keep their end of the bargain, the answer from City Hall has to be no. So I think it is our uh, obligation to make sure that Forest City Ratner fulfills all elements of the original agreement. We need that affordable housing. And let's be clear, and I say this as a resident of Brownstone, Brooklyn, if we don't create large amounts of new affordable housing, this neighborhood will continue to be simply a place for folks who have a certain level of income. It will not be the diverse place we love. It's a problem we have all over this city. And as gentrification has proceeded, and gentrification is obviously a multifaceted reality. It's not all good, it's not all bad. But one reality is we end up with an economically less diverse community, which is why we must make sure that affordable housing is built at that site. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to